Greetings and salutations, friends, and welcome to High Fleet, a game being released by Microprose. Uh, that's a name that's been out of circulation for a while, eh? Yeah, very much so has, but this is potentially a very strong return. Uh, this whole thing you see here is all user interface. You can click the little buttons, flip the little switches, click the other little buttons, move the little levers, <laughs> turn the little turning knobs, etc, etc. You can even draw little fancy figures on the map if you so choose. All of it is interactive, which is absolutely awesome. The game oozes personality and soul and character, though I will say that some of the ideas implemented may be a little bit beyond their current capabilities, frankly. Though, well, we'll get into a little bit more detail about that in a second. Um, this is a campaign mode right here, and I've started up a fresh campaign to demonstrate some of the mechanics. We're going to speed uh, down a little bit here. You are the surviving heir of the Romani Empire, after your capital was nuked into oblivion by evil, evil people. And now you are heading all the way up this lengthy ass map here to their capital to steal their magical MacGuffin thingity-bob and thereby force their surrender. This is done in a bit of a roguelite fashion, where if you die, you can restart, but you will keep bonus points, which allow you to buy fancier stuff for your next run through. Additionally, you will also be unlocking new ships as you are doing so as well. Of course, my main ship and my main fleet indeed is right here, as you can see, currently it's paused, because I have a another ship, a paladin, on the way towards this enemy base. The reason why I've launched that ahead is it's only one ship, so it's a hell of a lot more difficult to detect. You can see the little yellow bar here. That is the enemy trying to figure out what the hell is heading towards them. If they manage it, they will send out a warning beacon that will alert nearby patrolling enemy fleets and all hell break loose. So, let's take it off pause. You can also see the red circle there. That is something you want to stay out of until you've dealt with the garrison, which we will be engaging any second now, and it looks like the paladin is going to be able to catch them with their pantaloons around their ankles. All right, then. General alarm. I... <sighs> See, little things like this. This pistol here actually covers over part of the UI. Okay, what is this? Well, it's a Courageous, because I see it over there. It's an Attack Corvette. So I've got two Courageous and an Intrepid. That's, that's that's a lot of enemies for an early early fight there, which is slightly unfortunate. Ooh. All right, let's launch a couple of missiles against that one. We've caught them on the ground, so we can deal quite a lot of damage to them before they can even get off the ground, which is excellent. Boom! Screw you! This ship has two main guns. I've got a Burt gun right here. It goes Burt, therefore it is a Burt gun. Oh, it's about to reload. Right, let's get ready to... Screw you! Burt! Now, this one's a fairly heavily armored little ship right here, so... I really need to hit it with the big guns whilst ensuring that I don't get hit by its, its big guns. You can see up in the top left corner, you will see the reloading mechanic. You can see the cannons and the actual guns. Now, there's no ammunition. Oh, didn't pay attention there. I really don't want to be shooting at it from this side, actually. Um, I don't want to use too many missiles, but let's pop a couple more into it. And it shot down one, and I missed with the other. Well, that was useless, wasn't it? Right. At least I'm on the right side. Ah, if these big guns are not easy to hit with. Eat most of that. Come on, come on, come on. There we go, that was a decent hit. And there we are. So you are very much so encouraged to volley fire. Uh, you can also choose to retry. It will cost you one morale stat. So you can actually retry quite a few times. So if you get unlucky and you get just blasted out of the air immediately because you didn't quite dodge right, that's not the end of everything right there, which is very, very good. In this case, though, I am more than happy with my victory. 
The story, by the way, is told via art like this, with little splash screens and occasionally with choices that you need to make as well, as there are several characters in the game, all with their own likes and dislikes, so your actions will affect your relationship with them and with the wider world as well. If you are a feared leader in general, for example, taking offensive action might be more effective. For example, uh, threatening to blast them, firing a warning shot, for example. If you have a high fear stat, they'll go, oh, shit, he, he means that, and might be far more lenient towards you. Whereas if you're more peaceful, the more religiously minded people might be easier to deal with, etc, etc, etc. Now, since we've destroyed a bunch of ships, we can loot some of their nonsense. A bomb, I'm not actually particularly interested in that. Um, I wouldn't mind these cannons, however. So, you can see the bar underneath it. The higher the bar, the longer it's going to take before it explodes. So, so in this case, we're going to prioritize this 08 uh, mantle here. And once we're doing that... We're going to order the rest, less, the rest of the fleet to speed back up again, since the enemy are now dealt with. Uh, okay, let's get ourselves a new cannon. There we are. Let's get a second cannon as well. I need money right now, more so than anything else. And uh, we can also get to dismantle the hull. Fantastic. And that's some extra spare parts for me. The tutorial is all in-game, which is both good and bad. It's good because it lets you really get into the world, because your officers are the ones informing you of what's going on, but it's bad because you don't know what the hell is going on until one of your officers deigns to tell you. A bit of an issue. The morning after, you find a note in the pocket of your uniform. You have no idea how to slip a paper ended up in your possession. The message is short. One of your Tarkans is a traitor, Amir. Go to Urge's house in the Vesson district. Come alone. Oh, my. How was mentioned in the note is he's defined a tall aged Elim. Perhaps Ureg himself meets you at the door. He's getting on in years, but his bearing and commanding voice betrays his Hashirid origins. So it'll give you these little pop-ups, and unfortunately, it should be doing it all the time. Elim, Urgesh, Hasharid. I need to know what all of this is, because it uses a lot of derpy little foreign words. Former guardsmen the king can out some Harishid now serve the Lord Governor, also have taken refuge in the vast desert of Degarat. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, only one option there. When Harishid stopped receiving their pensions when Lord Governor overthrew the king, the old man responds calmly, but I'm glad to live among my fallen brothers in arms. Some of the Hashirids who serve the governor wish only good fortune for you, Amir. Know that Kiva is regularly informed about your journey. I was told the informant comes from the Prince Elau. Hmm. Now go, one must, no one must see us. Ureg turns around but links in the doorway. May the heavens be with you, Amir Al-Matar, he says over his shoulder. Okay, so the prince, now one of the characters who are traveling with me, this guy is claiming that he is sending information to the enemy. So I can assign a permanent security escort to him, which will piss him off, but we cannot force the risk, or it's all very strange, and the old man inspires little confidence, even if Fasil is a double inch, and he's still more useful than otherwise. Um, you can see right here, Prince Fasil is uncertain. I've got two stars with him, so that will piss him off quite badly. Hmm... Hmm. <laughs> this is all very, very, very suspicious and hush hushy nonsense, but I would not put it past Prince Fasingil to be uh, speaking ill words behind my back. But for now, I'm not going to risk my relationship with a potential ally. I sustained a tiny bit of damage in that previous engagement, so let's do a little bit of repairs. There we go. Also replenish my missiles, of course. That's very nice as well. And we'll sell off uh, that cannon I salvaged. I thought I salvaged two, but apparently the game disagrees, right? Very well. Maybe they're not interested in the other one. I thought it was the same type, though. Hmm, okay. Derpy derp. It's uh, not actually there, is it? No, no, it isn't. Hmm. All right, I'm going to put this in dock as well. This will give you a little bit of a moon lander thing where you need to put your ship down on one of the landing platforms uh, without destroying your ship, preferably. You can see the little numbers at the platforms. That indicates how much better of a repair spot it is. So currently I'm going to aim for the 62 one. So let's just quietly, gently, slowly. All right, 
there. Uh, 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 uh. Nice and gentle like, nice and gentle like, nice and gentle like. Like a feather. And that will boost my repair speed massively. Which is, of course, awesome. There you go. And we can exit. Because you don't want to be hanging around for too long at a time. This is also a communication station, so I can get a little bit of enemy intelligence here. Right, we've got five points of intelligence. Uh, since the prince might be ratting me out, I definitely want information on enemy strategic asset. Uh, well, that's not particularly bloody useful. Okay, all the way up there. I mean, all right, sure. Um... A tactical... Mm, no, I'd rather want some information on trade right now. Alright, so we have an enemy transport head a ship heading up to Ashud up there. And one heading to Ugarit up there. Hmm. That doesn't really help me out much, unfortunately, as I am way out of range of both of those. But hey, nice to know, I do suppose. Let's bring aboard some more supplies, some fuel. Ugh, I really do need to get some looting goings as well here. Actually, that was... See, that was very stupid what I did just there. I just bought fuel whilst next to the cheap fuel node. Ugh. Such is life when one is not very intelligent. Well, let's bring on the fuel and prepare our next leg of the journey. It'll also allow my crews to rest up, as you can see there. Gives me one more trade. Okay, hello. That might be interesting. Okay. We've got one enemy transport ship all the way up there. He seems to be heading... right about in this kind of a direction. He's traveling at what kind of a speed? Uh, slightly derpy UI. Speed 107. Okay. Right, so let's keep an eye on this. It's... One hour, two hour, three hour, four hour, five hour, six hour, seven. I know, I know, but I need to refuel. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Right. I did spend way, 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 way much too much time right there. Way, 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 way too much time. All right, so 16.3 hours at 107... So that's a thousand seven hundred circa, perhaps, ran about. Okay, so that's where it'll be right now. Now, this is one of the cool aspects and also one of the kind of retarded aspects of the game. As the captain, you need to do everything. You need to arm and launch the missiles. You need to uh, ask for help whenever required. In fact, I think I'm gonna ask for funds right now, actually. Because I'm a little bit low. Is it not my duke? Yes, it is. Can you lend me a hand, my prince? Anyway, well, I'll get the money together. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And you'll see, of course, that will make him like you a little bit less, but I need the money. You need to uh, operate the IR sensors. <laughs> you need to operate the radar. You need to turn it off and on, keep it active, passive. You can use uh, sector search if you... God damn it. The UI should not be activating the map when you're hovering over these elements, by the way. Let's see, let's uh, do a couple of scans there, for example. Is there anything over there? No. Is there any... God damn it. Is there anything over there? No. When messages come in, you're also expected to um, actually deal with those yourself as well. You need to handle the ECM, too. Okay, and this will be another eight hours, which means about nine, perhaps, so another 900 kilometers. Which would actually put it just about north of me. Interesting. I might be able to intercept that transport. That would be quite... And I completely forgot about that part of the game as well. God damn it. Right, okay. Yes. Send the paladin. I've already... I've already idioted. I've sent everything, I think, too. What the hell did I just dispatch? Oh, all of them. Right, well, that's unfortunate in the extreme. 
Let's go back a little bit. Maybe I maybe I can still salvage this somehow. That would be nice, wouldn't it? I can. Oh, thank God. Oh, they're getting a lot of warning though. But we're on top of them. You need to handle all the aspects of running your fleet, which can get very, 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 very stressful. All right, attack corvettes. Uh, yep, we'll go in with the paladin there. No worries. I also wish they'd lay off a little bit on the screen effect here. In fact. Let me, um, get hit a couple times on purpose here, so you can see how the screen starts to go completely, absolutely batshit insane. So already you can see that the screen is flickering like mad, the icons I'm dealing with are tiny, the only aim I have is that little arrow on the screen there, that's the only aiming device I have, as the screen flickers like mad. Then you get it talking to you, you get little uh, craters being blown into your screen as everything continues to flicker like absolute crazy, as the game screams loudly at you, as the ticky noises continue, and then you start running out of fuel, making you even more stressed, and then you need to aim, and you're like, oh god, that was a little bit off, ah, oh, and the enemy's shooting at me, ah, oh, dodge. Holy shit, this game will rise, will raise your blood pressure, it will. Good. God, it will. Uh, it's also damnably difficult to aim. I really need to... Okay, fire some missiles. I really need to start laying in some damage into this bastard. That was a pair of excellent hits. Eh, don't get hit. Right, you can also see on the little paper cut out of the ship there, he'd lost complete control. Oh, don't ram into me. Stressful. Extraordinarily stressful, frankly. Mm. Right. Well, I definitely need stuff here. Um, let's get some valuable from the crew uh, cabinet. I am heading towards it. Yes, I am. Am I doing so at full speed? Yes, I am. Excellent. Right, let's get that. Survivors. Oh. Well, that was unfortunate, but I got a gold elephant. That's nice. I got one gun. I got two guns. Uh, right, so let's see if I can have time to put on some crew protection. Secure the fuel tanks or search the captain cabinet. The fuel tanks right now. Fuel tanks are important. There we go. A little bit more fuel. Lovely, lovely. Let's put uh, the Paladin Mark II down as well. And of course, you got a land shit manually too. Oof. And when you actually get under attack by an enemy fleet lobbing tactical missiles at you and the entire interface is just screaming and beeping and shrieking and the radar is going off and the ECM's going off. Holy hell. It would be nice to be able to delegate certain aspects of it. Um, uh, for example, one of the things that really annoy me is you have a ELIT system, electronic intelligence gathering, and you can also detect enemy radar signatures. Now, detecting enemy radar actually gives you quite a lot of information, because it is a continuous stream of radar coverage. There's a continuous stream of data that you can continuously detect. This will allow you to figure out roughly how far away the enemy is, what kind of a bearing he is on, how far away he is, what kind of... I'm repeating myself because I'm getting distracted. The insurgents. I... Oh, this event. I hate this event. Um, none of these are good. Uh, I don't think I have military enough. No, I do not. I do not have enough force. I think all of these are negative. This one is the least negative, but it's still ruinously negative because I don't get any rest, which sucks quite a bit. That sip works. I did take a little bit of damage and I did fire a couple of missiles. So uh, let's do that. It's just, you know, hammering out a few dents here and there. Not a problem. But yes, let's say that I've got my radar on right now, right? There's an enemy ship up here, and it's using its radar. I will be able to detect that, and as the enemy moves, I will be able to get a firmer idea of what that enemy is. Because, you know, the first radar blip will be there, the next radar blip will be there, the third radar blip will be there, and so on and so on. So I can figure out, okay, this is the 
direction it's heading in. I can also determine its speed, and I should also be able to determine what kind of a radar it is. How large is it? How powerful is it? Can it see me? If it can't see me, how long until it can see me? And so on and so on and so on. Now, you can theoretically figure some of that out, but it all needs to be done manually. And even when you do try and figure it out, it seems like the information is more than a little bit flawed, to be honest. As I've had the ECM blaring away, telling me that there's enemy to uh, the 60 degrees heading, so, you know, over here, and yet I'm being shot at from over here by an enemy who apparently doesn't have a radar lock on me, and yet is lobbying tactical missiles my way. Alright, that seems a little bit weird. Is the enemy simply gathering the data some other way? Am I detected some other way? Am I detected via IR? Am I spotted? Is there alarms going on? I don't know. When you're going to have mechanics as relatively advanced as these, you really need more tools to figure it out, and certain elements I really think should be automated. For example, I haven't gotten a radio signal yet, it's a little annoying, but you have the opportunity to auto-intercept. Now, it's an awful auto-intercept, and it'll give you almost no information, but it would be nice to be able to click the this screw and wheel here, for example, and go like, okay, give me a rough bearing, an estimate, and the longer you allow it to continue to gather intelligence, the more accurate that resolution will actually be, the closer to the actual target you'll get. Uh, the lightning are both terribly rested, so a paladin's gonna be the only real option here. Let's send that out. I really hate using them on this kind of low morale, but well, my options are currently a hint limited. Let's decrease our speed. Keep ourselves out of the detection range as much as possible. And there we are. That should be a nice and successful ambush so we can speed up and... Booyah. Alright, what are we up against this time then? Uh, volley fire. A... Well, again, the gun is actually covering the thing. I don't recognize that thing. It seems to have a pair of cannons, I think. <laughs> I don't know. It would also be really nice to be able to click on things and be like, okay, what kind of guns do you have? I don't know. That's not information that you have available to you, sir. Right. Let's, since I don't know what this is, let's play it a little bit careful and uh, send a couple missiles this way. Oh, it's definitely got some missile armament. I think I just shot down one of my own missiles there, which is a hint unfortunate. It doesn't seem to have any roof armor, however, which ended very poorly for it. Well, that's about as uh, good as anything works out ever, frankly. Um, oh, small cannons, that was what it had, okay. Uh, Fitra Center survivors among the debris. Right, let's search for the survivors this time. We didn't find any. Uh, search the radio room. Yes, search the radio room this time and dismantle that AK. All right, so what I just got there was a part of a cipher key, actually. As you can see, actually, no, that's probably brought onto the ship itself. Right, open that. Oh, it's just because of Pino. Oh, no, I guess I need to recover it. What? No, 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 no. I did not tell you to do that. Calm down. Calm down. Right, let's head over there. Now, I am intercepting that uh, transport convoy, so hopefully I'll be able to detect that. Right. Okay, anything damaged? Mm, no, everything is actually hunky-dory, which is fantastic. Oh, I do need to actually land something. Um, land one of the lightnings then, that's fine. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Beginning final approach. Final approach. Lethal approach. Fair enough, I know what I'm doing. Ah, uh, the lightning is a nice and maneuverable little thing too. A very nice repair and deck here. 110! It almost feels shame not to be able to use it for anything. Touchdown confirmed. 
light as a feather. Still lost 1 HP. <laughs> oh, to be fair, 1 HP is absolutely nothing. Alright. My little paladin is... I've used a lot of my missiles. You wouldn't happen to have any missiles, would you? No. Well, rather use ammunition than expend people. You can sell a couple of these. You can also slap these onto your ships, but... I'm not actually particularly fond of the large cannons, honestly. I'm much more in favor of the little rata -ta 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 guns, because you can actually hit something with the little rata -ta 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 guns. Do I need any supplies here? Um... Not really, I don't think, no. Right. Now, there should actually be an enemy ship coming at me from this direction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to point my radar around about over there and I'm going to give it a little ping or two. Nothing. Hmm. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Its speed could have changed, of course. Let's uh, chill here for a little bit, a little bit. Because I'd really, really like to get that transport ship. Still nothing? Damn. It ain't looking like I'm getting lucky. Bearing in mind I'm on the ground right now, so my actual detection radius is also pretty pitiful. And I don't really have any ships that I could send out to look for it right now. Uh, well, let's regain some more morale. You can see that every time the morale reaches 100, you gain regain one morale point, which is very valuable because those are essentially the ability to re-roll combats. It's very, 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 very nice. Right now, I wish I had a scout craft. I actually made myself a uh, custom Hawkeye craft to specifically for instances like this, where the main ship needs to stay on the ground, but I know there's a transport somewhere that I would really love to intercept. L okay. One, one little try, one little try. I'm gonna send out the lightning, 600 kilometers that direction. Just hoping No. I ain't getting lucky. Eh, fine, return to base and we'll get you refueled too. Yep, yep. Carrier, carrier. Yep. There you go, it's landing, I think. There we go. The user interface can be a hint specific, shall we say. Right, so I could attack that place, but I don't think I will. In fact, I think I'll just head straight over there and head for some cheap fuel. But you should now have a decent idea of how the game works. Though I haven't run into a uh, big baddie yet. Let's see if we can maybe encounter something interesting and then I'll have you uh, give you a look at the actual building part of the game. Still nothing. Let's give it a quick little... Uh... Burp, burp. Anything? Nothing, right? Paladin, you are kind of overworked. I know, I know, but you are by far my best ship. In fact, let's, let's not use the Paladin. Let me show you how the lightnings work as well. Let's send them over there. Lightnings are nippy little bastards, which is of course pretty great. They had no chance to see me coming. An attack corvette. Ooh, okay. That's a that's a big boy. Two, three double cannons. Ouchies. Now I can only actually handle one ship at a time, of course, but I can choose to retreat this ship. Oh god. Okay, they've got missiles. That's unfortunate because uh, I don't actually have. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Well, I don't have flak here, because I've only got a cannon, but the enemy provided me with the flak that I needed. Very, uh, very nice of them. Right, I think I managed to destroy the first one on the ground. Ooh, careful, 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 careful. Ooh. Putting on a little bit too much in the way of G's there. The lightning is so bloody fast, it can tear itself apart if you're not a little careful with it. Mm. 
The map is a little small as well, like uh, your maneuvering abilities are a teensy weensy bit limited. 50% fuel. Uh, that's enough. That's uh, fine. You can also see there's a retreat button up there. Now, that doesn't mean that I'll be disengaging from the battle entirely. It simply means that I'll go and tag in the other lightning in this case, because I sent two lightnings. Damn, I'm really sucking at aiming this thing. I mean, I'm hitting the big boy, but... Uh-oh. Missile. I don't have any flares. Nor the right machine guns. Oh, okay, that was. Oh, come on. Aim better. Ammo explosion. Right, I'll take that. Oh. Spray and pray has its benefits, I guess. Come on, come on, come on. There we go, decent hit. Oh, 10%, right, okay. Let's, uh. Ooh, I'll be, I'll be cutting this one close. Retreat. There we go. That was on the bloody hair. Please die. This damn thing is actually outlasting my bloody fuel. Come on, come on, come on. There we are. Hey. Somehow managed to pull that one off too. Excellent. Right then, uh, disassemble the hull, dismantle the guns, search the captain. 35 survivors rescued, lovely. And disassemble the hull, that's fine. Handful of uh, spare parts. Right, let's have a look at the, uh, sadly, you can't save any time as well, which is a little bit annoying. It's Iron Man only. At the very least, you should be able to go to the main menu and have it save, but no, it just returns you to the latest save point that the game decided, and unfortunately, the game doesn't tell you where that is, which is kind of annoying. Right, so this is the ship working system right here. You can load up previous designs, like uh, the Seed one, for example. This is simply just a flying brick designed for long-range maneuvers. So it's got half tons of fuel tanks, a large fuel tanks in the center. And then it has got anti-radar missiles here, which are fired via the user interface. They can be pretty good at uh, making sure that strategic and tactical threats keep a little bit of distance, so as to not get murdered by anti-radar missiles. You can also look up, for example, the... Uh, let's see here, the lightning. There we go. Look up the lightning. As you can see, it's got the twin 100 cannons there, 100 millimeter rapid fire multi-purpose. But let's say that I don't like those, right? Those are not very good cannons. I don't like how they function. I don't like how their ballistics are. Right, okay. Let's replace them instead by the Burt Burts, because I love the Burt Burts. There you go, Burt Burt. There is some strange mouse acceleration in the game as well, which is really annoying. Because you move towards the thing and the mouse accelerates and you're like, oh, God damn it. I'm assuming that may be a bug, because there's no options to turn it off, either. And maybe, if we're going Burt Burt, we would like to slap on another Burt Burt, because three Burt Burts are better than one Burt Burt, or two Burt Burts, so... I'll do that there. There we are, now we've got three Burt Burts, but unfortunately this Burt Burt doesn't have access to an ammo module, as the ammo module here is busy providing ammo for these two cannons. Okay, well, what we'll do then is we'll slap on a small hole piece up there, like so, and then we'll find a ammo part, little one, there you go. Now it's got ammo, and we have a Lightning Mark II with three Burt Burts instead of two Dum Dums. And if you're feeling a little bit extra spicy, maybe you'd even pop on some armor. No, a lot of it's already reinforced, so that's not the worst thing ever, but maybe, since our new gun is awfully exposed, uh, we'd want to just be... Just a little bit, just a little bit, just to keep the gun safe, essentially. That... And then a one like that. Ugh, it's really, really apparent of the mouse uh, acceleration on this screen right here. And one like that. Lovely. Now our new gun won't be blown off immediately. And we can save it as 
Lightning. Brute. Brute. There you go. You can also make, of course, the larger capital ships as well. You can load up the Sevastopol, for example, to see how it was made. You can see there's tons of huge fuel tanks right here. It's got an ass load of little missile tubes up top with Sprint AA missiles, so it's designed to protect against incoming anti-air threats. It's got escape pods and it's got heat-seeking missiles as well. Plus, of course, guns are plenty too. The guns also have limited firing arcs depending on something is in the way, so these 57 multipurposes can't shoot up, for example. So you might want to move those into the nose, for example, where they'd be more easily able to engage threats to the front. Or maybe you'd actually want to have them in the rear, because this is one of the derpy little constructions, because the enemy usually are in front of you, I find. So mounting a huge ass heavy cannon battery in the ass might leave you in an interesting position on more than one occasion. And of course, you're going to need some landing struts too. There really should be a tutorial for this because when you're first starting it, you don't know what you're going to need, what, how you're going to set it up, how much fuel you're going to require, or how to read all the various data layouts either. And sadly, the option screens is... There, there are none. There are no options. The most advanced option is turning dithering off, which simply removes the little extra graphical effect. But sadly, it doesn't remove the constant screen flashing, which is... I would like an option to turn that off, thank you very much. Now, some conclusions here. High Fleet is a very fast-paced, very stressful on occasion, and a very charming game. It oozes, again, charm, personality, and character. That is the best part of the game. It has so much depth in just how the user interface functions. And it has so much depth in interacting with characters, in building your reputation through the world, understanding that you need to launch preemptive attacks against enemies, understanding that you need to avoid enemy ships, understanding that you need to locate their radar, try and silencing it with anti-radar missiles. There's so many cool mechanics and it's a shame that the game doesn't tell you about most of them. It absolutely needs like a, um, a captain's guidebook, for example, where you can click on that and it gives you common terminology. Like, what does ELINT mean? What does ELINT do? What is ECM? What does ECM do? What is an anti-radar missile? What does that do? With a little bit of a diagram on how to use it. Okay, you have located an enemy radar signature. This instrument will tell you where the signature is coming from. Then you flip the switch up there and you point the missile in the direction of the signature. Then you click launch because you are not going to be told that until further out into the campaign. That's the problem. The game tries to figure out when you'll need information, presumably to try and not overload you with it, but you need a guidebook of sorts to really figure that kind of stuff out. It would also be nice to have a little bit of a larger option menu and... God damn it. <laughs> Add in an option to turn off the flickering. I know, it's part of the aesthetic, it's part of the idea, because the entire interior is very, like, rough, almost kind of little steampunk. You've got giant floating ships with huge rocket engines. It is part of the style, but it also hurts my eyes and sends my blood pressure shooting through the roof. So that would be a nice thing as well. But again, it absolutely... It, it's so charming. It has so much soul to it that I'm willing to overlook a lot of the little mechanical derpies. And I tell you what, if Microprose manages to continue to release titles like this with this much soul, this much passion, but manage to tighten up some of the nuts and bolts, mm, they will be one of the hands-down best developers currently in existence very, very quickly. So... If you're interested in what you've seen so far, definitely go check out High Fleet. I'll try and remember to put a Steam link down in the description down below. And until next time, I have been Arch. Thank you all very much for watching, and I hope to see you all again soon. Till then, have a good day.